All right, so this whole video today is going to walk you through as simply as possible how this digital SAT scoring algorithm actually works. I know it's a mystery to a lot of people, but I'm just gonna break it down for you guys, uh, you know, what I learned and what I know. Just curious, have you taken a digital SAT or a digital P SAT yet? Please comment below, let me know how you did and what you thought of the test. Okay. First, let's talk about the adaptive nature of the digital SAT. So as some of you may know already, this test is adaptive based on module, not on question. So some tests, you get a question right, you get a harder question. Then you get that right, you get a harder question. That's not the case with the SAT. What they do is they give you first module, which is your baseline module. It's comprised of easy, medium, and hard questions. To be honest with you, I don't think there are many hard questions in module one, but what that first baseline section is doing is assessing your skills to determine if you should get a easier second module or a harder second module. Here's the thing with the scoring algorithm that you need to know. If you do not do well on module one, meaning if you get more than roughly 10 questions wrong on module one out of your 27 English questions or 22 math questions, you're gonna get the easier second module and you will not get much more than a 600 even if you smash the second module and get everything right. I ran a bunch of tests when they first released the Blue Book practice tests and I basically played with the algorithm and noticed that even if I got all of the questions right on module two, I was only scoring about a 580 after bombing module one. So if you're looking to get above a 600 on the English and or the math, you really have to do well on module one or you have no shot. Obviously with that being said, your goal is to get the harder second module, but the harder second module is not a walk in the park. And after working with tons of international students this past year on the new iteration of the test, what I've come to find is that students who get the harder second module on the English section in particular typically run out of time before they can finish. And that's never a good thing. So you're gonna wanna develop strategies and systems so that you can work through the harder second module as efficiently as possible. So right now for a limited time, we're actually offering our digital SAT workbook for free if you subscribe to our email list. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link up here. Go ahead and go to our website. When the light box pops up, put in your information. Once you're subscribed, we will send you a link to download the workbook. I would recommend you start there because our workbook gives all these useful strategies to help streamline the questions so that you can save time and work through it way more efficiently. If you can get through the second module because you have strategies and systems in place, you're gonna be in better shape because the second module will be comprised of more hard questions. And the way the scoring algorithm works is an easy question is worth 10 points, a medium question is worth 20 points, and a hard question is worth 30 points. So if you can get hard questions right on the second module, you're gonna get 30 points, 30 points, 30 points, and get a much higher score. Now, there is a downside to this algorithm though that you must know. So if you get a hard question wrong, you also can lose up to 30 points. <laughs> So when I ran all the trials on Blue Book, I intentionally got one wrong in module two to see what would happen. And I got everything right on module one and getting one wrong on module two landed me a 770. So then this begs a question, can you get one wrong and still get a perfect score? It is possible. I've seen it happen in my trials. But the only way that you'll be able to get a perfect score getting one wrong is if you get an easy question wrong. Is the scoring algorithm better or worse than the paper test? To be honest, guys, I have seen them be roughly the same. So that's kind of nice. If you're starting out taking the digital SAT, expect to score about the same as if you would on the paper test. However, I have seen my, some of my students organically get a boost on the digital SAT because it's short. Shorter. So if you like have a shorter attention span or you struggle with endurance at the very end of the paper test because it's like a three and a half hour test, 
The digital SAT might actually be your jam and you might vibe better with it because it's only a two hour test. One of the tutors on our team, to give you an example, scored a 1490 on the paper test and then a 1530 on the digital SAT with no additional prep. All right, so here's my recommendation now that I've kind of went over the scoring algorithm with you. The first thing I would recommend is if you haven't taken a digital PSAT or a digital SAT yet, get into the Blue Book exams app and take one as soon as possible. You are gonna wanna see what your baseline is on this test so you can know where to go from there. The next thing I would say is plan on taking at least two separate digital SATs. One big reason for this is that the algorithm seems to change slightly from test to test. This past year, I've seen some test dates be way more forgiving with the algorithm than others. So for example, students didn't do so hot on the March SAT, but they all hit home runs on the May SAT. So if you take at least two different tests, that ensures that you'll get a good algorithm that's forgiving at some point. Now, once you get your baseline score, you're gonna wanna get a solid prep plan in place, especially if you're aiming to take the March SAT because there's not a lot of time. So we do have two very, very good self-paced digital SAT courses, one for English and one for math. So since you're a loyal YouTube viewer, I'm gonna give you a special discount. If you use the promo 50 off at checkout for either course, you will get $50 off. So I'm gonna go ahead and link up here so you can go check out our courses. They're really great because they walk you through each lesson in an intuitive order so that you can build your skills and you learn really awesome strategies along the way to boost your confidence and make it so much easier to take the test. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you understand how the digital SAT scoring algorithm works. Please comment below if you have any questions for me and until next time, happy prepping.